so today's uh, topic of discussion is uh, slept capital femoral epiphysis so slept capital epiphy- uh, femoral epiphysis of the femur it's a displacement of the upper femoral epiphysis at the growth plate so as you, as you can see here this is the epiphysis and in the epiphysis of the femoral head and uh, just below that we have got uh, proximal physis okay and uh, below the f- uh, proximal physis you have got femoral neck which is uh, metaphysal area okay so we have got uh, epiphysis physis and below the physis we have got metaphysis where the proximal neck is there okay so proximal physis uh, is the place where the slip uh, occurs actually so here in this illustration the femoral head is uh, shifted slightly downwards of the neck through the growth plate that is through the physis remember again uh, the pro- it is through the physis the slippage occurs so it is the displacement of the upper femoral epiphysis at the growth plate okay so actually it's a misnomer to say it slipped capital femoral epiphysis the femoral epiphysis stay in the acetabulum which is the metaphysis of the um, proximal femur which slips out of the acetabulum so it's actually a misnomer uh, because the epiphysis stays in the acetabulum okay so this uh, slippage occurs gradually and sometimes also suddenly so the displacement will be usually posterior to the neck medially which may lead to coxovarus but the displaced uh, femoral epiphysis is still within the acetabulum okay the displacement is usually posterior and medial so come to the native pathogenesis most common cause for uh, slipped capital femoral epiphysis is idiopathic the reason is unknown that is the most common reason and uh, some other reasons are trauma and uh, obese uh, young individual and sexually underdeveloped that means hypogonad uh, people usually it occurs in male uh, more than female uh, patients especially in obese who are at the puberty uh, especially obese people who are at the especially at the puberty and uh, associated with endocrine diseases such as hypogonadism chronic renal osteodystrophy and hypothyroidism but uh, the most common reason remains unknown you can always remember as a fat i mean a uh, obese uh, male patient at the uh, pubertal age is more prone for uh, slipped capital femoral epiphysis okay so why does this happen coming to the pathogenesis see the physis is susceptible to uh, trauma or the slippage due to perichondral ring weakness okay i'm so sorry here 
very controlled uh, ring weakness weak fights is weak fights is at the table t due to circulating one of the process so you have understood that it is more common in males rather than females so why it is more common in the testosterone in uh, male uh, patients makes the physical uh, makes the physis weak okay so that's why it's more common in males rather than females testosterone makes the physis weak and uh, estrogen makes the physis slightly stronger okay so obesity also induce stress at the growth rate and uh, that also makes the physis weak so there will be physis separation leading to SCSC I may say perhaps to femoral epiphysis epiphysis separation and stays in the vestibulum but the neck rotate anterior and externally as I told that's a misnomer the epiphysis won't slip uh, but uh, physical separation occurs as a physical reason but uh, the metaphysis uh, it is the metaphysis which is get su- which gets separated and uh, rotated anteriorly and externally so we have got classification over here in temporal classification and load of classification and south peak angle classification okay temporal classification divides the scp into acute chronic and acute on chronic three types acute is less than three weeks chronic is little more than three weeks and acute on chronic which is super portion okay and loader classification we have got stable and unstable if the patient is able to weigh, bear the weight it is stable uh, SCFP and if the patient is unable to bear the weight it is unstable SCFP and we have got south peak angle which is not very important uh, for your uh, undergraduate level but you have got south peak angle of less than 30 degrees mild and uh, 30 to 50 degrees moderate and severe is more than 50 degrees you need not worry about this south peak angle you can just remember temporal and lower classification so Again, to repeat, uh, temporal classification, we divided it into three, acute, chronic, acute on chronic, and the loader classification, is a, it is based on the stability, whether it is stable or unstable, we have to classify, depending on that. So what are the risk factors, as we have seen already, it is a young, pubertal age, male patients who are obese, okay and uh, with hypogonadism thyroid and uh, chronic osteodystrophy these are all the risk factors you have to remember okay so bilaterality it occurs in 30 percent and 70 percent are unilateral and uh, almost uh, uh, majority of the cases once he has got uh, uh, one-sided SGFP almost uh, a majority of the cases will get uh, SFP on the other side also okay within uh, 12 to 18 months next 12 to 18 months so it's a young pubertal age male patient obese and uh, with the ob- uh, and with thyroid problem chronic osteodystrophy and hypogonadism okay So coming to the presenting symptoms, uh, the main symptoms will be the pain in the groin actually, which is radiating to the thigh and knee. As you, uh, some 30% of the people who have got SCFP come to OPD with pain in knee. They don't have pain at the hip. That's a, a paradox here. Okay, you have to remember whenever the young patient who complains of knee pain always check his hip always get an x-ray of his hip region okay so always uh, uh, some 30 percent will uh, have their uh, pain in the knee so pain often disappears 
head it will recur again there will be limp i mean the antalgic gait which occurs early and is more constant okay patient will be limping uh, there is one more uh, thing here the limp will be paradoxical actually the in antalgic gait the patient will put, put more weight on the normal side and uh, the body will sway towards the normal side but here the patient will put in more weight on the affected side and uh, recall it as uh, paradoxical limp okay so here just remember uh, pain will be there in the groin and the knee okay and uh, limp uh, always occurs early and is more constant difficulty in bearing weight will be there and uh, you can see underlying, underlying endocrine disorders like hypogonadism and uh, thyroid problem hypothyroidism and uh, chronic constipation dystrophy all you can see this um, in these patients so to remember uh, t- 10 to 16 year old obese male patient with limp hip and knee pain you can always suspect ac sp the commonest age group is 10 to 16 years and uh, or uh, the pubertal age group obese male as you can see here you have got uh, a male patient okay how is obese and you can see the endocrine uh, uh, features hypogonadism or hypothyroidism okay he has got a pain in the hip and on the x-ray you can see the displacement of the femoral head which uh, resembles ice cream falling from the cone okay so how do you examine clinically okay main feature is the limb will be rotated externally and there will be adduction and shortening limb will be rotated externally there will be adduction and there will be shortening when the limb is rotated externally obviously internal rotation cannot be done and abduction cannot be done okay so there will be loss of internal rotation and abduction patient walk if it is stable with his limb externally rotated and with short knee he will not be able to do internal rotation or abduction when hip is flexed knees goes to the ipsilateral axilla in the normal patient the knee when it flexes it won't go towards the axilla it will go straight here in this patient when the hip is flexed knee goes to ipsilateral axilla and there will be limitation of hip movement muscle bulk is reduced i mean the muscular atrophy will be there and frontal lumbar spine will be positive you can see here affected leg is turned out so outwards i mean the external rotated leg and there will be shortening and there will be limitation i mean the loss of internal rotation or abduction what are all the investigations you would do here you should get a plain x-ray first x-ray of both hip ap and the posterior okay and uh, x-ray itself usually is uh, sufficient rare case mri is done mri of both hip is done and they should always rule out endocrine causes like thyroid testosterone for hypogonadism so uh, 
were the radiological features which occurs here is some breakage of the shenton land shenton land is a line which uh, joins the astabl uh, some obturator uh, foramen the upper border of obturator foramen and the lower border of femoral neck there will be line joining these two and it is continuous in normal people here in uh, scfe the shenton line is broken this you can write in exam in x ray there will be breakage of shenton line okay and uh, one more sign will be there treto one sign that we'll see later yes so ready to make to radiological features there will be breakage of uh, uh, shenton line that you have to write first okay and uh, there will be treto one sign what is treto one sign you draw a line along the superior surface of neck in an anterior posterior uh, view of uh, hip x ray you take x ray uh, of hip anterior posterior view draw a line on the superior surface of the neck as shown in the figure which is called cleans line okay normally that cleans line will pass through femoral head but in scfp the cleans line will not go through femoral head okay and this is known as treto one sign and obviously you can see the display growth plate to the metaphyseal side okay so these are the two radiological features you can write a broken shenton's line displaced growth plate to the metaphyseal side and stethoscopes and stethoscope sign and it and it is very specific for scfp so what is the treatment you are going to do as i said once the patient has got one sided uh, scfp majority of the majority of the people will go for scfp of the other hip okay so at uh, the other normal hip uh, the, uh, the, uh, the affected hip you can do percutaneous incisive pinning with handle screw i mean you can insert screw uh, into the head okay and uh, for the normal hip contralateral hip you can observe or you can do prophylactic pinning So for acute slip, what we are going to do is close reduction and pinning. Pinning means inserting some key wire or screw. Okay. Uh, for gradual slip, which is less than one third slippage has occurred, if the patient is fixed internally in situ, if it is more than one third, you have to do corrective osteotomy, which is performed at the intertrochanter region. Okay. And uh, unaffected side. i can do prophylactic pinning um, but uh, uh, to remember easily for acute slip you always do uh, percutaneous closed uh, pinning for uh, chronic slip for chronic slip you have to do cor- corrective osteotomy at the trochanter region i just remember like this for acute slip closed pinning for a chronic slip you have to do corrective osteotomy at the trochanter region and the unaffected site and you can do prophylactic pinning okay so this is a pinning as i said actually uh, it's a fixation with cancellous screw okay uh, this is the cancellous screw which grows from uh, metaphyseal region to the head fixing uh, in the femoral head slip to femoral head okay so what are all the complications only three complications are there avascular necrosis chondrolysis and uh, secondary hip posterior fracture okay so we'll end this session thank you very much